Hey guys, this is Dr. Cindy with another exciting video for you and your family and friends. Today we're going to be talking about the top five tips for better sleep. If you enjoy the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and let's just jump right into it. So I can tell you as a chiropractor, I've been practicing now for over 20 years. Um, our focus in the office is always better health, better well-being, more vitality, more energy, and yes, actually better quality of sleep. And I got to tell you, there are so many people out there where um, they're not getting enough rest, the quality is not there. Um, I would say it's it's a huge issue. There's a lot of people out there who could have better sleep. So uh, the goal of the video today is to give you some tips, things you can do to enhance that quality of sleep because if you don't sleep right, it can affect your energy the next day, it affects your mood your, the next day, how you focus, how you con uh, concentrate, how you basically produce, how you can get stuff done throughout the day. So sleep is absolutely critical. So let's go into some tips. Uh, so number one, uh, yes, I will say it that if your nervous system, if the spine is balanced through chiropractic care, you will sleep better. Now, how is that even connected? So if we actually look at the human nervous system, if we look at the human spine, so there's two major systems in the nervous system. There's something called the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So those are just fancy terms to say that there's basically a stimulation um, and there's a rest state. So for most people, they're in more of a sympathetic state. So what that means is this, uh, the system has more energy. It has too much going on. It's like putting your gas on uh, the pedal when you're driving the car and it's revving that engine and it's not turning off. Now there is a time and place for the sympathetic system to be active when you're moving, when you're doing work, uh, when you need stimulation, sympathetic is good. Um, but what we need to do is that if that system doesn't turn off, we can feel agitated, uh, we can't get a restful sleep, the body doesn't get a chance to rest, and more of the restful state is the parasympathetic. And you want it to be balanced, but if you're not sleeping well, it may be something to do with the sympathetic system being overstimulated. So with chiropractic, when we align the system, when you're getting adjusted and maintaining it, it helps with getting a deeper sleep, better quality of sleep, just by getting into that more restful state, the parasympathetic state. Uh, so having chiropractic care will help with that. Number two, I would highly recommend this, um, and I know this is gonna be tough, but um, avoiding coffee, avoiding tea. These kind of things are stimulants. Now the one exception would be something like a herbal tea. Decaf is decent because you're saying, okay, I'm trying to have less but caffeine is a stimulant. It's going into the nerve system, it's revving up that engine, and it can affect you. Now, some people, they'll say, well, you know, I only have a couple of cups a day, not a big deal. So ideally, you shouldn't be having caffeine, and I want you to get to the point it's more of a treat. So for myself, um, I find like, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I might have um, a treat, I might have some tea, I love Starbucks, as I've already mentioned before. Um, but anything like that, um, I will not have it throughout the week and I've trained myself to treat it more like a luxury, um, something special, not something I need to start my day. Because I also know that it can affect things like heart rate, it can affect sleep, it just keeps the body stimulated. So if you're listening to this, if you can avoid caffeine, I've talked to some patients that hey, no big deal, I'll drop that coffee and tea, awesome. For some of you, it might be a little more challenging. So. What you want to do is, if you're having two, three cups a day, maybe say that, okay, so instead of two, three cups, I'm only going to come down to one cup. And then that one cup I'm going to have, I'll have it earlier in the morning, nothing after 12 p.m. So kind of work in that way and then start to look at herbal teas, look at maybe having hot milk in the morning, something different, uh, but get away from the caffeine because you'll do better. Um, the other thing I should also mention as well, alcohol does play with the body chemistry it does affect us so we want to clean the body out we want to detox so let's avoid the caffeine let's avoid the alcohol and it, these things will start to make a difference we'll start to uh, get um, better sleep um, another thing you want to do again the name of the, uh, this whole kind of theme of the video is that stimulation factor so before you go to bed if you play video games if you're watching tv if you're on the internet checking email all this kind of stuff so looking at a screen, being engaged is also a form of stimulation. The brain is getting active. It's obviously processing that information. 
So what I would suggest is one hour before avoiding screen time, maybe a half an hour before avoiding screen time, you know, close that laptop, uh, turn off the phone, um, just avoiding any kind of stimulation from a computer or a screen uh, will definitely be beneficial. Um, another thing I would say as well is what are we going to do instead? Because a lot of people are like, well, okay, I'm not going to touch my computer, not going to look at my phone. What's there to do? Well, there's actually a lot of things you can do. So what you can do is um, whatever you feel comfortable with, comfortable with. So you can do prayer, meditation, some deep breathing exercise, maybe actually read a book, read something that you find inspiring, something that relaxes you. Um, we want to just kind of get the body and mind prepped that we're going to slow down and get ready for sleep. You can't go like from 100 miles an hour to zero. You want to kind of just slowly, slowly tell the body to get ready that it's about to sleep. You may even want to start, um, you know, dimming the lights uh, in the room that you're in and starting to prep the body that, hey, you know, bedtime's coming, getting into that routine. And that brings me to another concept as well, having a routine. So don't go to bed, you know, one night, midnight, one time, 10 p.m., one time, 12.30, 11.30. If you have a sleep schedule all over the place, so the time that you're going to bed and the time you're rising, if they fluctuate too much, that can also throw it off. So the body likes rhythms. It likes consistency. So if you can do that, you will see a huge difference. So be aware of the time you go to bed. Be aware of the time that you rise. And of course, as I share this with you, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I know on the weekends, a lot of us, you know, you like to sleep in a bit and stuff, um, but you know, still keep it within range. So if you usually get up at six every single day, maybe on the weekends, you can get up at seven or eight. If you get up at like 11, I mean, that's just, it's hard for your body. And it, it's almost like, if you think about it, if you switch too much of your time uh, that you sleep, it's almost like you're going in different time zones. Like it's a stress on the system. The body's getting confused. Go for consistency as much as you can. Um, another thing as well is I am a big advocate of napping. So see if this works for you. So if you do nap, I would recommend that you nap about 30 minutes. Anything more than that, it may affect um, how you sleep at night. Some people have said that if they nap at all, it throws off their whole system. Obviously, don't do that. You want to be, you know, see what works for your body. But I would encourage napping, especially if you haven't slept well a couple of nights. And again, maximum 30 minutes. Anything beyond that can really throw off the schedule at nighttime. Also, again, when it comes to routine as well, you know, the time you're having your dinner, the time you're arising, having breakfast. So even your eating patterns, I think eating too much just before bed. Now the body, we feel like, oh, it's doing nothing. Well, now it has to take energy to break down the food. Um, that will affect quality of sleep. So you don't want to eat too heavy uh, just before you sleep as well. Another thing that would help as well, um, physical activity. So you want to incorporate throughout the day. The body, uh, here's a big message. The body is designed to move. So for a lot of people, you know, go to work, whether they work from home, they're on site right now, they sit all day in front of a computer. We just need people to move again. That's for better health, better well-being. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you're doing nothing, if you can go for a 15, 20 minute walk, and if you're like, well, I do walks, then maybe you can go for exercise, whether you work out at home or a gym, whatever that looks like for you. But when you burn energy, when you are physical throughout the day, you will find that it helps uh, with sleep. Your actual sleep environment, and I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, your actual sleep environment. So you want to actually look at um, how dark it is. So you want to see what you feel comfortable with. Do you want it completely dark? Do you want it dark, but there's a little light source? Look at those things. Look at the temperature. Uh, one thing I recommend as well it says sound machine, you can buy something, but to be honest, um, if you go on your phone, there's apps which has nature sounds. I always recommend like water sounds. You can even go on YouTube and find this stuff. So water sounds, um, I enjoy listening to that, but uh, you can even type in fan sounds on your phone on YouTube. Go under YouTube, type in fan sounds, and it's just the sound of a fan and you can listen to it for an hour. There's some videos that are for like five, six hours, whatever it is. Um, but having that sound when you sleep, I find that very beneficial. Be aware of also the temperature in the room. Um, another thing also is that I talk about fan sounds. You may even want to have a fan in your room. You know, just make sure the heating, the blankets, 
make a little bit of an effort, but you want to get to a point that as soon as your body lies on the bed, it knows it's comfortable, the lighting is good, the temperature is good. Obviously in Canada, the seasons are changing, so you have to uh, adapt to that, but look at your environment and then even maybe make that investment and say, okay, how is my pillow? And if you're listening to this, I will say from my own experience, I'm a big advocate of something called a buckwheat pillow. So if you go on Amazon, you type in buckwheat pillow, um, it shapes to your head. <laughs> I find it very beneficial. It's a little more firm. It gives your neck support, which I believe in. A lot of pillows just kind of collapse. I do believe the neck needs support. Um, if you've, you're like, oh man, I've tried a bunch of pillows, nothing's working. Maybe another suggestion is try not using a pillow or just if you're comfortable with this, roll up a towel, put it behind your neck and try to sleep straight, which, which will always be the best way. Big pillow underneath the knees, but just rolling up a towel, putting it underneath the neck when you sleep, try that. Uh, but if you're going to buy a pillow, go to Amazon um, and check out Buckwheat Pillows. I would highly recommend it. Um, it's something to look forward to. And I'm going to recommend a brand. It's called Comfy Comfy. Um, I believe, I'm pretty sure they're Canadian, but they're called Comfy Comfy Buckwheat Pillows. They're on Amazon. Check those guys out. Um, so keeping the routine. The other thing I would also recommend is a lot of people think about a lot of stuff before they go to bed and they're like, oh man, things are just going through my head. Another technique I would recommend is journaling. So before you go to bed, um, writing down your thoughts. So maybe what's on your mind, what you're thinking about for the next day, just get those thoughts out and keep that paper there throughout the night. So maybe if you think of something and you find a solution or there's something just on your mind, if you write it out, it's almost like it leaves your mind and then you can get the rest you need. So I, I hope that helps. Another thing I would also recommend as well, I know for myself, I love to have a glass of water by my bed. So um, throughout the night, I'll be honest, sometimes I get thirsty. Um, and then I find the first thing in the morning when you get up, for most of us, obviously, we've been dehydrated. You know, we've slept six, seven, eight hours, whatever that number looks like. But having that water when we first get up, I think that's critical. Um, I would highly recommend it. And especially throughout the night, if you feel thirsty, uh, you want to keep that handy. Um, another thing I would recommend, just from a safety point of view, uh, I've talked to patients where sometimes throughout the night they have to get up, maybe go to the washroom. So just make sure that there's proper night lights, proper lighting. I want you to be safe in case you do visit the washroom at nighttime. Um, and the more you do this, it just it makes the whole sleep experience peaceful, safe, less stressful. So just the whole name of the game is prep, prep, prep. And then once you have that system going, you'll be good to go. You won't even look at what you're wearing. So are you wearing things that are comfortable? Um, I personally love wearing like jogging suits, something that's very comfortable, but see what works for you. Um, I would recommend using more obviously cotton materials so your body can breathe, you're comfortable, whatever works for you again, but these are things to keep in mind. Um, and I, I think those are the major tips I would share with you. So went over quite a bit of stuff. Um, I want you to look at that, be aware of it. Um, what are the things you can do to be proactive with your sleep? And just like everything else in life, if you put effort into something, you'll get those returns. So I want you to sleep well. If you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you're enjoying these videos. Again, if you did get something that you learned, even one tip, just please like, share, subscribe. And I will be here next week with more information so you can have the best life possible. Thanks so much and God bless.